I've wanted to do a CD collection video since I started this channel. Unfortunately, I have well over 200 CDs, so that would take a little bit of time, maybe over an hour or so, so I can't really do that. Instead, I decided for this video I would choose the first CD that I saw for every year since 2000, so like 18 CDs in total, and just talk about them instead of talking about my entire collection, which would take a really, really long time. So, welcome back. Today I'm just gonna talk about a few CDs, whatever. Yeah, hope you enjoy it. Thanks for checking this out. First, for 2000, I chose Good Charlotte's self-titled album. It was the only one that I could find from 2000, and I looked for a while. I honestly only know like two songs off this album, but I really love them, so I bought it anyways. It was like two dollars, and I'm a completionist, so once I have a few CDs by an artist, I have to collect them all. Good Charlotte are really good, and I saw them live last year, which I think I bought this after that. It's a nice CD. In good condition, actually, too, considering I bought it used from Value Village. For 2001, again, the only thing I could find, because a lot of my CDs are newer, is Sum 41, All Killer, No Filler. This album is a pop-punk classic. Honestly, if you don't know, like, Fat Lip or In Too Deep, you can't call yourself a pop-punk kid. I'm sorry, you just can't. Um, iconic album. I don't listen to it much, but it's just too iconic to not own. For 2002, one of my favorites, Simple Plan, No Pads, No Helmets, Just Balls. This is such a classic pop-punk album, and it's actually one of my favorites by them, especially since they just finished their 15th anniversary tour for this album, and I saw them in Hamilton in September, so I got to see the whole album live, and it's just, it's such a classic. Um, every song on here is just a banger. I listen to it a lot, and I've had it for a really long time, so... It's in good condition. I take good care of my CDs, but it's still, it's pretty old. <laughs> For 2003, it took me a while to find one from that year, surprisingly. Um, I chose Maroon 5's Songs About Jane. It actually still has the sticker in the middle of it that says used $2.99. Um, again, a classic. All of these older ones are classics. This was their first album, which my favorite by them is Overexposed, but I don't really love their newest stuff, but this stuff, this is so good. I'm not even sure if I've actually listened to the CD since buying it, <laughs> and I've had it for quite a while, but it's a good album. For 2004, Green Day, American Idiot, a classic. You cannot yell at me for saying this one. This is truly a classic. It's actually been almost a year since I saw Green Day Live and they put on an unforgettable show. This album is so good. Anybody who's anybody knows it. Like, honestly, American Idiot, Holiday, Boulevard of Broken Dreams, Jesus of Suburbia, Wake Me Up When September Ends. This album is full of classics. 2005 is Paramore's first album, All We Know Is Falling, which was actually the first album I bought by them and their first album ever made. I found it at Value Village again for like $2. That's where I get a lot of my old used CDs. And they usually check them for you to make sure that they're cleaned, and if not, they'll clean them for you for free, which is really nice so that you aren't taking it home and then being disappointed that it's scratched and you can't play it. Uh, this is not by any means my favorite album by them, but it's still really good. It's nice and pretty. 2005, really old, but you know, good. I don't know why almost everything that I chose was band's first albums, but here's All Time Low, Put Up or Shut Up. Again, their first album. Again, not my favorite by any means, but... Where would they be without this album? My favorite is The Girls A Straight Up Hustler. Bop. Solid bop. It's only got like six songs or so. But, good album. 2007, quite likely one of my favorite albums of all time, Mayday Parade, A Lesson in Romantics. I was heartbroken that I couldn't see them on this tour for the 10th anniversary. 
But I'm seeing them on Warped Tour, which I'm so excited about. I've loved them for years, and this is going to be my first time seeing them. So I'm really hyped for this. It's actually a really pretty album. Um, When I Get Home, You're So Dead, Jamie All Over, Black Cat, Jersey, Miserable at Best. Full of some of their best songs that they've ever released. One of Fall Out Boy's most underrated albums, Folia De. I love this album so much. And I don't know why so many people think it's their worst album. I don't know. It's actually my second favorite by them. My first favorite is Save Rock and Roll, but this is my second favorite and it's really close. I love it so much. It's yellow inside. Um, yeah, solid album. Now, for 2009, here is an album that is very important to me, Masterpiece Theater by Marianas Trench, who is my favorite band, and this was the first album I ever heard by them that got me into them, and I've had it for a long time. I actually own, like, three copies at this point, and that's why this one looks so nice, because it's, like, the newest one. Um, yeah, that album is great, really underrated, um... Yeah, it's just special to me because it was, like, the one that made me fall in love with my favorite band. So, for 2010, we have the extremely iconic Teenage Dream by Katy Perry. I went through a phase where she was one of the only things I had listened to, and I still love her. I'm not as into her newer stuff as I am her older stuff, especially this album is solid. Um, I almost got rid of this after I finished my Katy Perry phase, and then I found it again, like, a year or two later, and I'm like, oh my god, I, I need to keep this. Um, I just was so done with that phase. I'm like, I'm never thinking about her again. That phase was so awful. Um, I've basically gone through so many phases, and at this point, I realized that, like, it doesn't really matter. Like, I'll listen to all types of music. I don't really care if people don't like a certain genre that I listen to because like when I was trying to get rid of this CD I was trying to be like the stereotypical pop punk kid who only listened to pop punk and I've realized since then that I don't care if it's music and if it's good I'm gonna listen to it um but yeah honestly iconic album folds open this is I've had this for a really long time. My cat just felt the need to come up behind me, so. 2011, we've got another iconic album from a singer that I've loved since I was little, Avril Lavigne. I miss her. It's been so long since she's released new music. I'm really hoping for this year because I love her. Um, Goodbye Lullaby was her 2011 album which is not my favorite by her, but it's, it's, it's great. And it's like the only thing I could find, so. She's great, I love her. Apple's great. 2012 is an album from the very first singer I ever fell in love with. One of the first albums I ever bought that made me obsessed with CD collecting and one of my favorite albums of all time, Red by Taylor Swift. This is her best album. It is. Let's face the facts, people. Um, I love her. I have since, like, 2006. I'm seeing her for the first time this summer, and I'm trying desperately to get noticed by Taylor Nation to the point where I am planning 147 days in advance that I'm going to be dressing up for the concert as something that she wore in one of her music videos. I'm not really revealing what yet, but it's something from this album era, I'll say that, as long as my plans don't change. And I'm wrapping myself in fairy lights and bringing a sign and everything. It's gonna be such a fun time. I'm excited. But yeah, Red is my favorite album she's ever released. She has so many really great underrated songs on here, like Holy Ground, State of Grace, Treacherous, and as well, I Knew You Were Trouble, 22, We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together. Like, those were bops. This album is great. For 2013, my favorite Panic! at the Disco album, Too Weird to Live, Too Rare to Die. This got a lot of bad reviews, but it's full of bops and it is like 
it holds a lot of memories for me because it's the album that made me fall in love with them and I love all the songs on here honestly this album is like so good I don't understand why people don't like it I guess they just want the stereotypical panic at the disco but like it's a great album my file just fell for 2014, I chose my favorite Set It Off album, Duality, which also you can see it's signed. I've met them three times. So I have almost all of my Set It Off albums signed at this point. Uh, this is, again, the album that made me fall in love with them. I started listening to them in 2014, soon after this album was released. And it's full of really great upbeat songs. And it's, well, they were transitioning from rock to pop. So it's like not really pop punk but like pop rockish album i'm sort of surprised nothing from it went mainstream and it honestly deserved to but it's a great album 2015 blurry face by 21 pilots yes it's sort of overrated and yes it's the album where like the click got huge but it's a great album and, of course, I discovered them in this era. Like, I'm not gonna lie and say I've been a fan since regional at best or anything. No, I found them actually a month before Stressed Out got popular. So I'm sort of used to them being popular. But, um, this album's great. I haven't listened to it in a really long time, but it was the only thing I would listen to for a long time in 2015. 2016, another one of my favorite albums of all time, Paris White Noise, which yes, it's signed from when I met them back in October, which I have a blog about somewhere on this channel. It has like a lot of views. I don't even know why it blew up, but it has like 400 views or something. I was just looking earlier. But that was such a good night and I actually sometimes rewatch that vlog and like cry because I miss them a lot. But I think I have a video in that vlog from like right after I finished the meet and greet of just me shaking and showing that I had this sign. But yeah, this album is so good. I'm really proud to say that I've been a fan for, of them since 2014 when they only had like two songs out and they've gone so far since then. And I'm really proud of them, so please listen to them. They are an incredible female-fronted band that they, they deserve the world. For 2017, I decided to choose something that I didn't use in my video of my top 10 albums of 2017, but one that was a close cut and almost made it on, and so basically an honorable mention. So I chose Coin, How Will You Know If You Never Try? They are one of my favorite bands at this point that I fell in love with last year and this album is really good and when I first discovered it I'm like really digging it. <laughs> they seem like they put on such an energetic show and I really like to go to one one day. So that's gonna be my goal is to go to a coin show. But this album almost made my 2017 cut. It was like number 11 on the list. So if I would have gone up to 20, then it would have been on it. But solid album, solid band. Check it out if you're into like alt pop, that type of thing. Coin are great. And finally, 2018. Of course, I don't have very many albums from this year yet because like it's only March. But here is one of my favorites that I love. Entertainment by Waterparks. One of my favorite bands, I started listening to them in early 2016 and they blew up later that year and I remember when like nobody knew who they were and they've gone so far since then which I'm really proud of them. This album was just released in the end of January and it is so good. Yeah, I'm really proud of them. But I have not really stopped listening to this album since it came out. It's also like really pretty. I love the aesthetic of it. And I love how they're doing their albums in like alphabetical order. So this is E, next is gonna be F. But if you haven't listened to Entertainment yet, check it out, it's great. So I've finally done what was supposed to be my first video on this channel, but I decided against because I knew it would take over an hour. And I've done this in like less than 20 minutes, so that's pretty cool. Maybe I'll do another CD video sometime. But I just sort of thought of this idea and I'm like, that's cool. It's still a way to show off my CDs without making it take super long. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe and check out my blog. It is, actually, I've got a new one up now. It 
I might have said this in my other video. I don't know if I had it up yet when I filmed my last video, but I changed my website from my old one that was through Weebly, and it was megsmusictalk.weebly.com, which was sort of annoying, and nobody could find my account when they tried to look me up. So now I'm just megsmusictalk.com because I upgraded to a paid website. And you should definitely check that out because I have a lot of cool features up there, including I recently photographed my first show, which I'm super proud of, and I'm hoping for more photo passes soon. I applied for one with bleachers, but I don't think I got it. But I'm going to work on gaining up my portfolio so I can get one that big next time. I've also got a lot of cool interviews and features and stuff coming up. So yeah, definitely keep an eye on my blog and follow me on social media and stuff if you want. I usually follow back. Thank you for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. Um, check out these albums if you don't know them. And maybe comment below some ideas of what else I can do with my CDs for another video that won't take over an hour. Thank you again. Bye.